Hi everybody and thank you for viewing my fly tying tutorial. Today's pattern is going to be a great pattern known as the Royal Trude. I'm going to first show you this pattern in its, its original version and then I'm going to show you a little variation that I love to tie. Um, I don't know too much about the history of this fly. Uh, it, it does deviate from the Royal Coachman. There's so many flies in that family. Uh, that Royal Coachman, for those of you who are a little unfamiliar with it, Google it. It's an extremely historic dry fly and uh, wet fly in the fly tying and fly fishing game. Um, it's known for a few characteristics, most notably this, this uh, great wing that they have on there that really just separates it, the brown hackle. Um, you have a beautiful body with some peacock on it, some red floss, and, um, and some of this golden pheasant for the tail. This Royal True definitely falls under that same category. It's, it has this giant white calf tail for a down wing. Um, it, it has a lot of the same, uh, the same aspects and characteristics of the Royal Coachman, but I, I guess it was even uh, originally tied as a joke, but then the fly started catching fish and it caught on. Um, I'll tell you just a little bit about how I fish this pattern because I really believe that is one of the major keys to this pattern. First of all, most people fish it as either a stone fly or as an attractor pattern. And I would definitely recommend to go off on that tangent. But because of that down wing, you can also fish it as a caddis. Whenever you're fishing this, this, um, this particular pattern, I would recommend to fish it in the riffle. I would recommend to fish it in spots where you might just get a quick drift and there's a chance that the fly will be drug underneath quickly. Um, it's a great fly because it's very buoyant. Uh, it's excellent for brook trout, but here's the one little tip that I have for all of you. Whenever you're fishing this fly, keep it dry. Fish it as a dry. Fish it across as an attractor. You can do a hopper dropper type setup with this fly, but then as you're fishing it across and it gets to about three quarters of the way downstream, let the fly get caught in the current, let it swing into the current, and strip it back. So let that fly go under. The fish will take it also possibly as a, a darting minnow. Because of the way it has that downwing, it really picks up some of those characteristics of a streamer as well. It's just a great all-around attractor pattern. Um, I know some guys who fish in, Mexi in uh, Michigan during the hex hatch, and uh, it just seems to work for a, just a variety of fish. Don't be, af don't be afraid to fish it. Uh, try it out, put it in your fly box. Uh, you, I vary the, the size of this pattern anywhere between a size 8 to a size 16. In fact, today I'm going to be tying it on a size 16, uh, an Allen fly fishing hook. I'll zoom in just a little bit so you can see this. It's the D102BL. It's one of their dry fly hooks. Um, I really love this dry fly hook. It's just got a great profile to it, and it's barbless. Um, for the brown hackle, I'm going to substitute brown for a beautiful furnace um, that I have. Uh, I got this furnace from Clearwater Hackle. Um, they're just providing some excellent hackle right now. I recommend checking them out. I'll list their website at the very end. Uh, but this is just a beautiful furnace that is going to tie just an excellent, uh, it's going to be used for some excellent hackle at the front of the fly. So let me get into this, this pattern, the Royal Trude, and then my variation. Um, I'll first show you the Royal Trude. Uh, I'll talk about the, the pattern itself. I won't waste a lot of time with it. Then I'll get into tying the variation. So again, thanks for viewing everything, and I hope you enjoy this fly tying tutorial. All right, for starters, let me show you um, the traditional Royal Trude. If you look at this fly in terms of uh, everything that we have going on, I'll just kind of give you a quick 360 of it. Then I'll explain all of these pieces, and then I'll talk a little bit about the modifications and the variations that I'm going to make in my pattern. For starters, we have this golden pheasant tippet for the tail. It's a really soft material, but it still will support um, this fly whenever it's moving in faster water. And coming up, we have two pieces of peacock stuck between them. I shouldn't say stuck between them, but found between them, we have some red floss. A very traditional color, very classy looking material. Coming off the top, we have a white uh, calf tail wing. These tips will typically fall right around the same length as the tail. If you notice, mine are just a hair shorter, which is how I will tie the traditional pattern. And then finally, we have some nice brown hackle found at the front, um, enough that it's about approximately five turns, but enough that it will support this fly whenever it's resting on the water. So I'm going to be tying a variation, and I first want to mention that um, I had somebody email me, and they, they asked um, why I always stressed about uh, making your own variations of the pattern. And I'll explain. Um, th there's two main reasons. First of all, you want to fish something that the fish don't always see. Now, this is not what I would call a common pattern um, by today's standards. So will fish see this? Probably not on a regular basis. However, there still is a chance that they will see a royal wolf that's quite similar to this, or even a coachman if you have some, some uh, other some, we'll say, old-timer fishermen on the water. But the reason you want to vary it is, is, A, simply because you don't want to be fishing the same thing as everybody else. 
But then B, I want to talk about some, we could say, I don't want to say necessarily improvements, but just some brief modifications you can make to this pattern that will kind of enhance your own fishing. For starters, I'm going to be modifying the tail. I really like golden pheasant tippets, but aside from them being a little bit soft at times, um, I don't really believe that they support the fly as I think they should. Thus, I'm going to be putting a material there, there that will be a little bit more supportive. Peacock, if you've noticed any, any of my other videos, I love peacock. I'm going to leave it in there. For the red floss, it's a great color, and it kind of stands out, but I'm going to use more of a fluorescent color for that in between. Finally, for this calf tail, um, I really do like white uh, calf body hair, actually. So I possibly sometimes use that, but I also love snowshoe rabbit, and I love that dun color of the snowshoe rabbit. Um, it just really looks great, and it really um, mimics a lot of patterns. Even though this isn't a tractor, that snowshoe rabbit will really just look like a lot of naturals that are on the water. And then finally for the brown hackle, um, I am going to be using furnace hackle. Um, I really just think that the clear water hackle I have is just some excellent, excellent quality hackle, and I'll be using that. So I am going to now tie my modified version of the Royal Trude. Um, there's a couple other modified versions out there. I believe there's one known as the Lime Trude that actually won a one fly contest and it really gained some quick popularity. Mine's going to be similar to that, but it's still going to have a lot of the same characteristics as the original Royal Trude. So let me give you the pattern and then um, I will show you how to tie it. All right, let me get started tying my variation of the Royal Trude. For starters, I have an Allen fly fishing hook. It's their D102BL. I have a size 16, which is about as small as I will go on this pattern. It's a great looking hook for this. I'm going to use an 8 dot dark brown thread. I'm using dark brown because when I finish this pattern off near the eye, I like to completely go over all of the wing material. I'm sorry, the, the head area with that dark brown, thus the wing material won't show up. I'm going to wrap uh, the whole way back to the, the bend of the hook. And I have, I'm going to grab a little piece of moose body here. This is what I'll use to vary the tail instead of the golden pheasant tippets. What's nice about this moose body hair is that it's very stiff and it will really hold this pattern upright. I might grab a little clump of them. I'm looking for around five or six. If you go a few extra, that's okay. If you go a few under, that will be fine as well. When you, when you trim this at the butt section, you're just going to hold onto the tips and pull all that extra fluff out of the butt section. Then do the same thing around the tips. You can stack this directly in your hand, but instead I'm just going to grab my little brass stacker. Stack all those fibers. Once you pull them out, you'll hold them by the tips. Then I'll place them back into my right hand, measure them over the, um, the hook. I want them to be about the length of the hook, including the eye. So I like to make them just a little bit longer. I might lock those in by wrapping towards the eye of the hook, and then I'll wrap back. I don't want to let the tail splay out too much. These do have a tendency to splay, but as long as you're holding it firm, they won't splay out that much. And then I'm going to trim off these butt sections. I don't want them building up the body of the fly too much. Next time I grab a piece of peacock from the eye. I like grabbing them from the eye because they really have a lot of uh, fibers on them. So I'm going to find a great one right here. trim it. After I've snipped it off, I might grab it from its tip, trim the tip away, because typically that tip will be just really easy for it to, to break off of this pattern. I might tie my peacock in and just make approximately three turns. If you go a little bit more, that's okay because you'll be able to um, wrap back over the peacock with your body material. Okay, I have the peacock locked in. I'm actually going to just wrap forward so I can kind of wrap it out of the way. Next time I grab my body material. Instead of floss, I'm going to use a material that really just seems to light up in the water. It's called Globrite. I'm using number 11 today. This is like a, a really yellow with maybe a hint of green, so it's a, a borderline uh, fluorescent chartreuse color. I might just snip away a little section of that. I'm going to tie it in right where I tied off that peacock. I'll show you what I'm doing here. Once I have it tied in, I'm just going to leave my, my wrap loose, pull it closer to the tip, and stop. Then I can firm it up. 
That's just a little tying tip because uh, you won't have to worry about snipping away the tag end of that. I'm just going to wrap back. This is the point I can wrap back as far as I want as long as I'm holding on to the loose section of this of this material. So I want to wrap back pretty far because I like to leave space up at the front for tying off. After I've wrapped back, I'll come back forward a few turns. I'm going to put place one initial uh, layer of this Globrite floss. But if you notice, as I'm getting closer to the tip, or as the, the front of the fly, it will taper down a little bit. And that's because of my, uh, my, my moose body hair that I tied in as the tail. So I am going to have to build that front section up just a little bit. I'm going to wrap back once to make sure that everything's covered. Once I'm sure it is, then I'm just going to kind of double it up, make a few extra turns here, and then tie off. loose section, just snip it away. I'm just going to pull the peacock back just a little bit. You want to be careful. This is prone to breaking. I'm just going to make a few wraps with that peacock. Okay. And now we have that classic body established with the trude. A uh, few varied materials. If you don't feel comfortable at this point, you can always put a half hitch in, and you're, you'll ensure that you won't lose anything. Now, this is where it gets a little difficult for tires because if you notice, we're getting the front really crowded really quick. So you want to be careful with that. If you are a beginning tire, and you, as you're tying this pattern, you notice that you're just crowding that eye a little too much, then you can just make your body section a little smaller. You can also go to a one extra long hook. Both of those are really great options. At this point, you'll see I don't have a lot of room to tie in my final materials, so sometimes I'll just take a couple extra turns back, and I'll actually be placing those materials halfway back through that first um, peacock section. Well, I'm going to substitute um, something for the calf body hair or for the calf body tail. I'm going to be using a little section of snowshoe rabbit. Um, I really think that snowshoe rabbit is just an incredible material, but you have to be careful because this stuff, as you tie it in, it really builds up quickly. So I'm just going to hold on to a little section of this and snip it off. Now I definitely have snipped away too much, but that's okay. I want to really show you what to do here. I grab the little section and I hold it just by the tips. I'm going to pull out all this fluff. You can definitely hold on to that and blend more dubbing if you want. But we're only going to focus on the tips and that's all that we, we want here. I rest my tips over and I want to see exactly how much material I have. It's easy to add too much material at this stage. But I have pretty much just enough because I really just want the profile of, of that wing in there, of that down wing. Now if you remember me mentioning earlier, a lot of tires will tie it so those tips are going the whole way back and they reach the tips of the tail. I really don't prefer that. I like to go just a little bit less, even though I do want a strong profile. So I measure it with my right hand, then I transfer it over to my left hand and tie in. So I know I want it right there. I'm going to hold on to that same spot. and I lock it in with approximately seven. Now, there's a couple little tips that you can, a couple little techniques that you can do here. One would be to, to use a bodkin or even just your fingers and pull all these fibers up and then place one wrap of thread below them to kind of prop them up a little bit. I'm not gonna worry about that because I do like this down wing look. But if you really want that wing really shooting up, you can do that. The next tip or the my next little um, piece of advice is, whenever you trim this front section, try to trim as close to the hook as possible. That's because you don't want to crowd the eye. Now I'm just going to wrap forward. I want to get rid of most of that white. I'm, I'm, I'm never going to get rid of all of it. You can see there's a couple little fibers popping up. I'll try to trim those away. But that's more for the purposes of this video. That's something I typically won't do. All right, then finally, I'm going to grab my, my furnace hackle. This is from Clearwater Hackle. Just some awesome looking hackle. I'm using a neck for this. Um, you can use a saddle if you'd rather. You can use brown. You can go with a darker ginger. But in this case, I'm going to be using this furnace. If you take a look at this hackle from the back, it's just got just some beautiful coloration. Most of the size 16s on these will be found about an inch and a half up, somewhere in this section. I've already pulled one out. This is what my hackle is going to look like. And if you notice on this one, 
it starts to blend from that black to brown. I'll zoom in so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. As it starts to go from that black to brown, that's when I start to pull those fibers back. I'm going to pull them back just with my fingers and my fingernail. So I'm holding on with my left hand. I'm pulling down with my right fingernail. It's going to look like this. I'm just going to trim away the bottom part of that stem. So I have just a little bit to tie on with. Just like that. So I'm going to be placing that directly on this head, tied in, then I'm going to use my hackle pliers to bring everything forward. Okay, that's it. So I've made about four turns, again, closer towards that wing. I'm going to wrap forward just to the eye, and I'll hold on to my hackle pliers. As I'm wrapping with this clear water hackle, um, I do want to mention to you that some guys will oversize the hackle here. If you go over a little bit, that's fine, uh, simply because they really want this fly to be floating, and they really want it propped up when they're using it in a riffle. Got some extra stragglies there. There's one, two, I like to make approximately four turns of this hackle. Three, and four. I'm going to hold it up. I only need to bring my thread around two times or so to tie this off. Trim away the tip. There are a couple little stragglies, a couple little hackles that got trapped as I was tying it off. We can simply just trim those away, pull everything back, ensure that we have nothing by the eye of the hook. Place one half hitch. For my whip finish, I only need a couple in there. Okay, so when that brown hackle went back, so I just want to pull it forward to give it that classic look. All right, let me clean up this fly, see what's going on right now. I'll grab my bobkin to show you everything that I have. Uh, so this is my variation of the Royal Trude. If you look at it from this profile, we have a lot of the same characteristics of the original. We have a uh, of that long stiff tail. We have peacock, we have a nice bright color for the body. We have brown hackle and we have that white wing. However, as we start to look at our materials, we gotta remember that our white wing is not calf tail. We have that, um, that snowshoe rabbit. Our tail, we're not using those pheasant tippets. We're using moose body hair, give us a little bit more uh, structure, give us a little bit more buoyancy. For the hackle, we are using that classic brown hackle. I did not go too crazy, I didn't over hack wet by much, but I did go just a hair. Again, that's really to help with the flotation. We have that nice chartreuse color. We're not using floss, we're using that glow bright yarn to give it a, a really just a distinct color as it's in the water. Well, uh, thanks for viewing this fly tying tutorial. Thanks to Allen Fly Fishing for their D102BL hook. I recommend tying this between sizes 16, go the whole way up to a size 10. And also thanks to Clearwater Hackle. They have some wonderful hackle and I recommend you guys checking it out. As always, thanks for viewing uh, this fly tying tutorial. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to post them directly on this YouTube page or you can email me at tkinesa at gmail.com. Thanks everybody.